A man was life flighted to the hospital early this morning after a serious car accident in Cheatham County. It happened just before 1 a.m. on Bear Wallow Road near Peter Pond Road in Ashland City. Police tell us the driver lost control of his car and ran into a utility pole. He was thrown from the car. Police are not sure whether he was wearing a seatbelt. And a 21-year-old woman faces DUI charges after an accident last night in South Nashville. When police arrived on the scene on Welch Road near Jonquil just after 11.30, Christina Sire said her car had been sideswiped, forcing her car to leave the road and overturn. But police say evidence at the scene just didn't match her story. She was taken to the hospital with non-critical injuries while her passenger, a 25-year-old man, was hurt in the crash. Police, though, say he will be okay. What started as a peaceful protest in Berkeley last night ended with smashed windows, smoke bombs and tear gas. Police and masked protesters faced off in what quickly turned into what witnesses described as a mob scene. The nonviolent marchers dispersed once the violence broke out. One officer was hurt. There's no word on how many arrests were made. The march, though, was organized to protest the recent grand jury decisions in both Ferguson and New York. This was the fourth night of protests in that area. We can breathe. 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 Protesters around the world continue to show their support for victims of police brutal brutality here in the U.S. A French teenager filming this demonstration in Paris as he saw people there from all over the world protesting and holding signs. Meanwhile, dozens showed up yesterday in Nashville at the public square to stage a die-in. Protesters lay on the ground for 15 and a half minutes. Four and a half of those minutes to represent the four and a half hours that Mike Brown's body lay on the ground and 11 minutes for the 11 times Eric Garner pleaded with officers saying that he couldn't breathe. It affects me because I just I identify with the victims from a personal level and also I just, it just makes me feel like I've lost a sense of safety. That's organizer Laura Manson who says she put together the event in less than 24 hours through Facebook. She told us she hopes it will lead to grand jury reform and stricter laws in cases concerning the use of excessive force by police. And a candlelight vigil will be held here this Friday in honor of Eric Garner. It will be from 7 to 9 at the Metro Police Headquarters on James Robertson Parkway. In addition to Garner, the vigil will also honor all victims of police brutality and racial profiling. Organizers recommend bringing extra candles and warm clothes. And President Obama will be in Music City this week to discuss immigration reform. But his speech won't take place in front of hundreds or thousands of people. Rather, a couple dozen at an immigrant community center on Nolensville Road. News Channel 5's John Quill Newland has more. Hello. Walk into this room at Casa Azafran and you're enveloped in a cultural combination of food, people, music and gifts from around the world. In just a few days, this same room will host President Obama in his second visit to Nashville in less than a year. We learned Wednesday night that we were the chosen site for his visit. And since then, our life has been taken over by Secret Service, White House communication, and other White House staffers. Renata Soto is the executive director of Conexion Americas, a program that helps Latino families socially and economically integrate into society. Conexion Americas received $2.1 million in federal grants to make Casa Safran possible. And so I hope that he also sees the federal government dollars at work in a good way and, and how it should. In its first year open, Casa Azafran served more than 8,000 in the community, everything from medical care to education and performing arts. Alongside President Obama's immigration reform, the center helped Cesar Malona find a new path in life. As an immigrant, he initially planned to drop out of high school to begin work. Now I have the chance to actually work here legally. Um, raise money so that I could go to college. Uh, thanks to President Obama, I will be starting college in March. In November, the president issued an executive order to provide temporary legal status and work permits to more than five million immigrants living in the shadows, one of them being Caesar's mom, Bertha. I have children and I need working and I need driving. Before it was just my, my brother and my sister legally here and now it's, it's all of us as a family. While families like this one have cheered the president's actions, Republicans have accused Obama of overstepping his powers. On Thursday, the Republican-controlled House declared his actions null and void. We all bleed the same way. We all breathe the same air. We all eat food and just like everybody else, you know. And 
just because you're white and I'm brown doesn't make a difference. We both have a beating heart, you know, we're just like everybody else. 17 states have joined together in a federal lawsuit to challenge President Obama's actions. Tennessee is not one of them. Across the state, there are nearly 124,000 undocumented immigrants. 50,000 are right here in Davidson County. Good news this morning for Tennessee high school seniors and their parents. The governor's office is offering one more chance to sign up for the Tennessee Promise program, which gives high school seniors two years of tuition free education at a community or technical college. What they're calling the last chance to sign up is this coming Wednesday, December 10th from 8 until 430 on the scholarships website. Just go to TennesseePromise.gov.